Have you ever wondered what happens if our brain, which helps us think and make sense of the world, doesn't work right? What does it mean if someone starts forgetting simple things? What could be causing this? And is there a solution? If these questions are on your mind, then you're in the right place. Today we are going to talk about a very important topic, which is neurocognitive disorders. Often people ignore it or do not understand what it is, but how important it can be for us and our dear family, today we will discuss this. Let's take a look at its main points. First, we will see what it is, how many types are there, what are its symptoms, what causes it, how can it be prevented, how is it diagnosed, how can it be treated. And finally, its conclusion. Let's start with its first points. What is neurocognitive disorders, or you can say, brain-related thinking and understanding diseases. So let's see. When a person's brain, such as the ability to remember, think, understand, or make decisions, starts to have problems or weaknesses, then we call that condition neurocognitive disorders. That means those parts of the brain that control our ability to think and understand. When they do not work properly, then the person faces many kinds of problems. In this, the person has some difficulty in remembering everyday things or in doing some work. However, they are capable of living their normal life. This does not mean that it should be ignored. With the right recognition and treatment at the right time, a person's life can improve. Now let's talk about its types. Broadly, neurocognitive disorders are divided into two main types. First, mild neurocognitive disorder, mild cognitive impairment. In this, a person has some difficulty with memory and thinking and understanding. But it is not so severe that the person cannot perform their daily activities. There's just a bit of struggle while doing normal tasks. Second, major neurocognitive disorder, severe cognitive impairment. In this condition, a person has significant difficulty in performing daily life activities. This includes considerable problems with remembering, understanding, and thinking. Sometimes the person may even have difficulty recognizing their loved ones. Each person may exhibit the disease in different forms, and its effect also varies from one individual to another. Therefore, if you or someone you know is experiencing such difficulties, it is very important to consult a doctor or mental health specialist. These were the two main points. Now let's move forward and look at what are its symptoms or signs. So let's see. When someone has neurocognitive disorders, or diseases related to cognitive impairment, there are certain symptoms or signs that can indicate that something is wrong. These symptoms can vary from person to person, but there are some common signs that are often observed. Let's learn about these symptoms, which can indicate that someone might be facing this disease. Let's start with forgetfulness. The most common symptom is difficulty in remembering. Forgetting small things like where keys are placed or not remembering someone's name. Next, difficulty understanding. Difficulty in understanding simple things or following a story or instructions. Next, difficulty making decisions. Having trouble making everyday small decisions, such as what to wear or what to eat. Next, trouble communicating. Not being able to choose the right words or not being able to express thoughts clearly. Next, changes in mood. Sudden changes in mood, such as becoming sad or angry without any reason. Next, trouble with daily tasks difficulty in performing tasks that used to be easy, like paying bills or making a shopping list. Next, getting lost, getting lost even in familiar areas, even around your own home. Next, confusion about time and place, not knowing the correct time or day or forgetting where you are. Next, trouble recognizing things, difficulty in recognizing family members or friends or common objects like a watch or keys. These were some specific symptoms if you or someone close to you repeatedly shows these symptoms, it could indicate neurocognitive disorders. These symptoms can sometimes be temporary and then disappear, but if they persist repeatedly or continuously, it's a signal that consulting a doctor is necessary. Now let's move to the next points, where we will see what causes it. Let's see friends, when we talk about the causes of neurocognitive disorders, it's important to understand that it's a complex issue. It's not due to one or two reasons, but can be due to many causes. In some people, the problem is genetic, meaning it has been present in their family before. And in some cases, it's due to other reasons, 
let's understand some of the common causes, starting with brain injury. If someone has had a head injury, such as from an accident or falling, it can affect the brain and later lead to neurocognitive disorders. Next, diseases. Some diseases, like Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, or Huntington's disease, damage the brain's cells, which can lead to cognitive weakness. Next, excessive consumption of alcohol or drugs. Habits of drinking alcohol or drug abuse also damage the brain, which can give rise to cognitive disorders. Next, nutritional deficiencies. A lack of essential nutrients, such as vitamin B12 deficiency, can also lead to cognitive weakness. Next, stress. Prolonged stress or depression also negatively affects the brain, which can lead to neurocognitive disorders. Next, medication side effects. Sometimes the side effects of some medications can also lead to cognitive weakness, especially if the medications are taken over a long period. Next, age. In old age, some parts of the brain may weaken, which is a common cause of neurocognitive disorders. The thing to understand is that there can be many causes of neurocognitive disorders, and sometimes there may be more than one cause. These were some causes, now let's move to the next point, where we will see how it can be prevented. So let's look and understand. Friends, although it's not possible to avoid every cause, there are some ways by which we can reduce the chances of its occurrence. Here are some measures provided. So let's start with a balanced diet. Eat nutritious and balanced food that keeps the brain strong, like green vegetables, fruits, nuts, and whole grains. Next, physical exercise. Regular exercise or yoga keeps the brain active and healthy. Next, mental exercise. Solving puzzles, reading books, or learning new hobbies are mental activities that keep the brain sharp. Next, healthy lifestyle. Stay away from alcohol or drugs and do not smoke. Next, reduce stress. Activities like meditation, yoga, or dedicating time to your hobbies. Reduce stress, which is good for brain health. Next, regular health checkups. Keep having health checkups regularly with a doctor, especially if you feel you fall into any risk factors. Next, proper sleep. Getting good and complete sleep is also crucial for brain health. Friends, these were some tips by following which you can prevent its occurrence. Now let's move on to the next point, where we will see how its diagnosis or testing is done. When someone shows symptoms of neurocognitive disorders, consulting a doctor or health specialist becomes very crucial. The process of examination or diagnosis involves several steps, which tell us what the actual problem is. Let's see how this process goes. So let's start with medical history. First, the doctor wants to know the person's medical history or complete medical background. This is to check if there was any previous illness or if they are taking any medicines that could be showing symptoms. Next, physical exam. This involves the doctor conducting a physical examination, like checking blood pressure, observing the heartbeat, and other basic tests. Next, neurological test. This includes checking the functioning of the brain and nerves, such as reflexes, muscle strength, muscle tone, senses of touch and sight, balance and coordination. Next, imaging tests. Through MRI or CT scans, images of the brain are taken, which look at the brain's structure and help in identifying any abnormal growth or injury. Next, blood tests. In some cases, blood tests clarify several things, like infections, vitamin deficiencies, or other health conditions that could trigger cognitive symptoms. These were some methods through which the examination of neurocognitive disorders is done. Now let's move towards the next important point where we will see how it can be treated. The treatment of neurocognitive disorders, or cognitive weakness diseases, depends on the symptoms, the type of disease, and its severity. It's a condition that's difficult to cure completely, but with proper care and treatment, symptoms can be managed and improvements can be made in the person's lifestyle. Let's look at some treatment methods, starting with cognitive therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, or other mental therapies help individuals understand their behaviors and assist in making positive changes. Next, medications. There are medications that can improve cognitive functions and reduce symptoms such as memory loss, confusion, or problem-solving issues. There are specific medications available for disorders like Alzheimer's disease. Next, lifestyle changes. Adopting a healthy lifestyle such as regular exercise, eating a balanced diet, getting adequate sleep, and reducing stress can also reduce the effects of neurocognitive disorders. 
Next, social support. The support and companionship of family and friends significantly help individuals cope with this condition. Joining support groups where others share their experiences can also be beneficial. Next, environmental adjustments. Organizing the environment around individuals to make it simple and safe, such as arranging the home to prevent injuries or wandering, is an important measure. Friends, these were some treatments that can manage or control neurocognitive disorders. If you feel any point is missing, please let us know in the comment box so that we can help others and share your strategies too. This was our video for today, in which we explored what neurocognitive disorders is, how many types there are, what its symptoms are, why it occurs, how it can be prevented, how it is diagnosed, and finally, how it can be treated. I hope you found this video helpful for you, your family, friends, and colleagues. If you feel any points or tips are missing in our video, please do share your thoughts with us and definitely share your strategies too. Also, share this with your friends, family, and colleagues to help them. And we will meet in the next video with treatments for a new disease. Until then, a big thank you. And please don't forget to like, comment, and share. Thank you.